So welcome to, uh, to IBC 2015. My name is Roman Makwich. I'm the CIO for Bloomberg Media. And uh, I'm here to just give everyone a quick update on FIMS and our move from FIMS from being just a standard to a solution in our ecosystem. So Bloomberg actually is one of the, was the first implementer of FIMS and we were one of the key contributors along with the IBM and Sony teams to uh, the RFT that was issued by the e EBU and the AMWA. That was back in 2012. So I'll give you a quick background on everything that happened from then till now and also what are, what are the benefits of adopting FIMS and what are the future steps that we're taking and seeing those benefits. So as I mentioned, Bloomberg Media, our global news organization, have 169 bureaus around the world, radio, television, distribution, obviously a digital presence, and a business week as well from a print standpoint, and an affiliates business as well. I'm not gonna bore you with stuff about us. So as a quick overview, from a background standpoint, there was an original problem that we were working to solve collaboratively with the EBU and the AMWA, and then that evolved for us into actually taking a look and aligning with a, call it a reorganization, restructuring of our technology platforms globally. In doing that, uh, FIMS came along at a very opportune time and we, we were honestly very blessed to be able to contribute to it. So, the original problem, which in many shapes exists to one extent or another in organizations, FIMS has actually helped us solve that original problem in our space. And that problem is any content from anywhere to everywhere all the time. So what does that really mean for a business? From a business standpoint, every media organization is challenged to achieve that because that's the way you get your content in front of the most people to be able to get influence, impact, viewership, and be able to monetize it. Now, along those lines, there's a very big urge to do that as quickly as possible to as many platforms as possible, but what's always coming into play at that point is the fact that there's stagnant business workflows, content processing bottlenecks, user expectations that are continuously shifting, evolving, growing, and for technology staff, a never-ending integration battle. It could be called a project, but it really is a battle. Along those lines, we at Bloomberg actually took, took that opportunity to say, you know, rather than continuously reinventing the wheel, let, let's actually work collaboratively with the industry to develop a standard that isn't just another standard, but is complementary in nature and doesn't result in us having to revamp our architecture, but allows us to integrate it and over time expand it into our ecosystem in a way that's meaningful and has tangible business results beyond just the technical results. That moved us into what, what we call an evolving imperative, which is continuous technology evolution of the media life cycle. And in, a, in media at that time, and that was 2011, 2012, and to a large degree, this is still a true statement, there is, a, is and was a complete lack of standards while having a requirement to provide a flexible, reliable, scalable, and sustainable media life cycle platform to distribute and monetize across all mediums with no standards and the need to get something more in return than just the cost savings on the pure integration effort. So that led us to FIMS 1.0 and three base services that we wound up implementing at that time, which were Transform, Transfer, um, and Ingest. So I'll, you'll see a few slides about that later. I promise I won't read every slide, I swear. The opportunity for us, and actually that's what's more, uh, more interesting for us, is actually to enable cut the content life cycle everywhere at any time. If you saw the, the original problem that I mentioned was getting your content from anywhere to everywhere all the time. But the part that that overlooked was the fact that it's not just a matter of having your finished content or your captured content or your developed, written in, whether it's text, audio, video, it doesn't matter, content, delivered to a bunch of places and repackaged for distribution and monetization. It also requires you to be able to do that production aspect anywhere and everywhere really at any given time. So from our standpoint, our platform that's based on FIMS allows us to actually take a look forward and leverage the complementary nature of FIMS to enable business-driven workflows in our organization across platforms. And actually at this point, we've extended it across organizations, whether it's our partners, 
or service providers in certain cases. Not everyone's adopted FIMS. It is not the answer to the world's problems or world peace. I'm never going to say that. It does, however, provide a viable technology stack for the content life cycle universally, and it empowers content much along the lines of what you're seeing in the Internet of Things approach, enabling seamless interaction across media ecosystems, despite the fact that those ecosystems grew up in a disparate nature over time. So from how did we actually go about doing this? We stuck to one core principle, and ignoring all the bullets, the bottom line is, is as an organization, both from a technology and a business standpoint, you have to own the integration and the business workflows. Everything else is driven and depends on those things. And oftentimes, the business will make decisions based on opportunities for revenue, growth, et cetera, and tightly coupled to technology in those aspects, and then you can never uncouple without actually sacrificing or cannibalizing the business. Or you just wind up rebuilding that same thing in a different stack. With FIMS, we actually took the approach where every, the technology solution is completely complementary. It allows us to pick any product, and I'll go into that in a little bit of detail, but literally any product where we have a FIMS service and a reference adapter set, we can pretty much integrate and have integrated any transcoder, file accelerator, um, interest component at this point, repository, into a FIMS, uh, exposed as a FIMS service for consumption in our ecosystem, in about a quarter of the time or less than what you see in the standard space. In real world examples, that means that something that would take us six weeks to get to a POC testing phase, we now do in four days, and we can be in production in six. That's actually tangible to the business, and it's sustainable because we can do it without having to impact our, the rest of our infrastructure. Since it follows the FIM standard, if you have a service for, uh, say, file transfer, there's a new accelerator out there, you have a FIMS adapter, you put, you, that adapter is already defined, the interface to the rest of your ecosystem is defined. All you're doing is turning on that input and seeing what the operation set is from it on the POC standpoint. And if there's an issue, it's contained to within that set, to that product and to that adapter. It never propagates through the rest of your infrastructure. So going along those lines to actually achieve this, we took, we took an elegant approach. And there's a little bit of detail that I have on what that elegant approach is, but the bottom line was to expose applications as services, model business aligned workflows, adopt a solo based workflow driven architecture, and then ensure that every step of the way we actually integrate a way to ca capture and measure performance, status, um, and be able to build a true picture of what the ROI and cost basis is for any operation. That resulted in, from our standpoint in what is a collaborative technology ecosystem. And this is a little bit more detail on that. This presentation will be available for download, so I'm not going to bore you with that. The high level parts are any vendor component. We want the vendor component that's the best one for, for its niche product set. Whether you're a transcoder, whether you're a QC, automa automated QC system, whether you're a storage system. We want you for whatever is your differentiating factor, not because you do the five other things that everybody else does, but you do it 5% better inside your own environment. So from our standpoint, it lets us level set the playing field for all the vendors that we're, we're looking at, but also lets us maximize the opportunity with any of them that have leading technology. Using FIMS, we have a universal translator for all the operations that would, would be used in any media workflow and they're all the basic atomic operations, that none of them are coupled to start. So you can rearrange and sequence those however you need to build the workflow you need, not be dependent on actually a workflow set as an adapter or, or translator. And all of that is still driven and maintained from a content-focused standpoint. If it does not, does not serve the need of be able to create, process, package and deliver media content, then there's no point in doing it. And it doesn't actually fall inside our implementation and in what FIM should be. So as a high level view of what our reference architecture is, we have a FIM's based BPIL and a media based ESB running in our facility. Some of that is homegrown, some of that is off the shelf. All, all of it actually talks FIMS and uses, the FIM, uses FIMS as the payload for communication. So it doesn't actually matter to us if tomorrow, which we might, choose to swap out the media ASB platform that we're running. We could, do, we could do the evaluation for that. 
in four days for viability. And because we would be safe, it will probably be about seven to 10 days to actually do a load level test verification. We'd be running into more resource constraints if we want to truly inject it into the global ecosystem or only a regional set. So going along those lines, what does the media, global media platform truly look like? Starting with the FIMS-based BPEL and the media SB and building out to the services, you effectively have something where there, there is a high availability global system that is, that is a completely workflow-based system leveraging standardized services. So as you see, there's FIM services and a FIM, FIMS-like services definition. Since vendors were not as fast to adopt FIMS as we needed, we followed the FIM standard and then did some API wrapping to, to expose it as a, their stuff as FIM services. As they've adopted FIMS, we've retired our custom interface and adapters and actually instituted theirs. What this means for us, practical standpoint, is as you see there's a New York, London, there's actually Hong Kong and one other site that's coming online. All those sites are live, live. They're running, running now 24-7, they've been running 24-7, and any of the workflows that execute in one are, can be executed or portions of them can be executed from another region if you drop the transcoding service in New York for a period of time or if it's oversubscribed for capacity and there, there's enough time to transfer the media set to, say, London, transcode it there and ship it back. That'll actually happen as part of a workflow decision tree, not something that you have two operators, one on each side or four operators, depending if you're adding a QC layer and so forth, manually communicating by phone, email, and a lot of screaming sometimes to make deadline. This is also powering any of our failover for disaster recovery purposes. So any site can run standalone. What that means from an application standpoint is we've exposed our media assets, and the example here is video-based specifically, for search preview, update, distribute, and process across the globe. So today, literally, we ingest, well, we publish around 2,000 clips for digital distribution on a weekly basis. We process about 200 to 300 a day, but we ingest probably about seven to 10 terabytes of footage a day that's exposed globally, not just for preview, but for rough cut editing, all using FIMS without having to transfer the high-res asset. So all of the preview and proxy work is all streamed from wherever the source is. The markup EDL that's created is done by uh, actually a, a freeware interface with us actually marrying that to the FIMS services behind to do the processing. And then the delivery is only the target output delivered to the target region location. So we are maximizing the efficiency of our bandwidth cross-site while at the same time leveraging all of the assets content-wise that are coming into our facilities. And now I'm struggling with PowerPoint. So I mentioned before there, there is a notion of KPI and metrics. I will not bore you with a dashboard, although there's some folks on my team that are right now cringing because the dashboard is their lifeblood. They're, it actually is the lifeblood for our supporter organization and our operational organization. Inside this dashboard, as you probably can't see that well, every, uh, every service is represented by those lovely green circles, status, health, performance, but also there's a view of any job that's running and any sub-portion of that workflow. So if you have a job, if you want to transfer an asset from London to New York, you're gonna transcode it from PAL to NTC, you might be transcoding it from SD to HD or vice versa, depending on source destination. You may also be do, needing to perform some additional metadata markup on that because it's going into a control room and for digital distribution. Every step is actually captured in that workflow, so during, the, during any instance of that processing, if there's a question of status, that's fed back in real time to the dashboard and to the user on a subscription basis, so not not one, two, five, ten percent of every workflow, but most people care about how long it's taking to transfer the job in total as an aggregate and what the transcode time is for, for conversion because typically someone's already shortchanging the transfer time because they want to, they know, hey, the asset's there, I want to use it for another purpose because it's a hot news story or it's a hot piece of content or so forth and so on. Our support team actually uses this to do monitoring, but also maintenance and deployment. So any failover new service deployment is actually run through the dashboard as well. And now I've said all the things that the bullets are, have there. So bottom line is, is that dash dashboard is actually using the same exact services that are doing the production operations. There's no mysterious layer sitting in between. 
it is, it, we are eating our own dog food effectively and not choking on it, which is a good thing. So from a scaling standpoint, where we started with uh, get, doing an initial implementation of FIMS for some base services and graciously and luckily getting the IBC Innovation Award in 2012 for our implementation, we basically took the original problem as mentioned to getting that content from anywhere to everywhere all the time and pushed that through our business to the point where now what we're really focused on is future-based engineering uses, using state-of-the-art practices and processes, commoditizing the media infrastructure, leveraging the IoT concepts that have become a very new fad, which is to IT folks somewhat comical because they've been struggling to present that atomical approach and service-based approach for years without getting buy-in from the business, and streamlining our media factory. We, we are, have actually achieved that to a point, and I'm, I'm going to talk about it at the end slide, but where we are now platform agnostic from a media production standpoint. So we don't care if you're digital, linear, audio, radio, even print. Our, our production set literally happens anywhere and is not a do this somewhere, put in a word file, email it to me, let me open that up, paste it into the, news, the newsroom system, then pro do another round of steps. It is literally people in the field who are capturing the asset if they're doing recording or generating it if they're actually writing copy for it, marrying that set at that time, presenting the proxy of that to the journalists wherever they are in our, in our ecosystem. And our ecosystem, from a practical standpoint, has the walls of our enterprise facility around the globe. But from a real standpoint, service-based, we also are leveraging some cloud-based services as third parties where we've been able to expose those through PIMS. That has led us to a high level of implementation of FIMS agents and services. I think there's over 100 listed right now for the number of agents that are in production. Those are both real and virtualized, and we're actually pushing the virtualized aspect much further at this point. And our goal, from a technology standpoint, to serve the business is actually to make production possible anywhere in the cloud from end to end. Now, there are some vendors out there that we're partnering with and we're going to leverage some of their core technology, but it's going to flow through our FIMS-based system in order to be able to be processed, packaged, and distributed throughout our enterprise and through our, all of our partnerships. So at the end of the day, what does that all mean? Initially, 2012, our implementation resulted in an 8x increase in content production. We went from 200 clips a week to roughly uh, 1,600 to 2,000 on peak. We've actually peaked at 4,000, depending on the news cycle today. 80% decrease integration time, which I mentioned, the six weeks down to four days. Extended services was our, was our next big push. And honestly, had we not done our FIMS implementation and been lucky in terms of timing to be part of that effort, we wouldn't have been able to, in six weeks, restructure and reorganize our entire production operation. That included literal physical control room, feed delivery, transmission, uh, assembly, and distribution. And basically from, for those not in the United States, from Thanksgiving to New Year's Day, effectively, in 2012. So, and we did that with no impact to air and minimal, and when I stress minimal, minimal investment in infrastructure and technology. The only uptick we truly had was a storage uptick in the region we collapsed the, the content delivery to, which was a natural byproduct of it. We then further evolved that platform based on where FIMS was going. We were with the repository service. That allowed us to have a true standardized me method for all of our storage silos that existed and to leverage those and in some cases replace them without having to endure the vendor integration cost and pain that comes with it. We increased output globally for content by about 25% and we further reduced integration costs by 40%. So although some folks will cringe and they're standing here cringing, there are things where I, I will have a conversation on Monday morning about integrating or testing a new piece, a new piece of product and by Tuesday afternoon, I'm seeing the POC of it. Now, there's times where I'm pushing for a little bit more than that, and, th there, and I'm, I'm harping on the fact that there's a standardized interface, there's no work anymore, but there is still some work. I'm not, I'm not gonna say that. That said, from our standpoint, this has allowed us to actually shift our focus as a technology 
team globally and also as a, as a business and move technology solutions into a true service contract model with our various businesses and platforms. So what that meant is, is before where there was a series of silos of whether it was developers, engineers, and it was in both cases, support folks, yes it was in both cases, or all three. Um, Cross-train, consolidate those teams, but also move them beyond being platform one-to-one -one relationships. So at this point, the, the platforms are actually going uh, cross-platform or multi-platform from a sales effort and a content effort, and we're already there, able to meet their demands for content, content creation, packaging, distribution, delivery, and actually feedback on life cycle of those assets and essences. And it's moved the concept of the technology group to being an actual business within the organization and allowed us some leverage into actually eliminating some of the business dependencies that existed before from a technology set. The last thing that I had mentioned before is all of that has been building towards us moving towards a truly platform agnostic media production set and we are there now for better than 60% of our daily operation. We are not there at 100% yet, only because, of, well, we're a little cautious too sometimes. But our, our goal is that before 2017 is here, we can, we can literally do content anywhere, anytime, everywhere, and from all aspects of it. So you can have a truly distributed content production, processing, packaging, delivery, distribution, and monetization model across any and all platforms. And that is, going, is powered by FIMS, and without FIMS, we wouldn't be able to do that. So are there any questions from the very large audience that's here? No questions, perfect, I love that. And Jean-Pierre, uh, Roger will let you know if you need something else, I'll gladly be doing that for you. Thank you all.